Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the KNF TM2324. This is a 62 inch tripod and the link for it will be in the description below so you can see the specific one which we're talking about as there are a few variations. We're going to be looking at the stability of this tripod, the weight and compactness of this tripod, but it's also a great price for beginners or people on a budget. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video. So, starting off, this tripod is not carbon fiber. This is something at the moment which everyone's looking for. Everyone wants carbon fiber tripods, and this is not carbon fiber. However, it's still very light due to its compactness and its smallness, considering the size it gets to, and it's also very strong. It comes with a typical mounting plate that can work on other tripods. I have a second tripod, which I'm loaning for this video so I can record you while not using this tripod and this head which comes with it will go on that tripod as well as this tripod which makes it great. As I say, this is the tripod that I use for all my videos, I use it for my vlogs and I've used it to film all of these reviews up till now. We've also used it in the Canon 75-300mm to 300 millimeter review when we were doing the autofocus test and today we're also going to be testing the stability of this tripod. So this tripod, if we just go through each of the elements, you have the mounting plate, which you can screw straight onto a camera so you can take it on and off. There is the screw here, simply so you can tighten the plate onto it. And it's a nice secure attachment. My tripod has never threatened to fall off in any way. And I shoot with the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, which is almost two kilograms. So for a normal camera, the weight is not a problem at all. There is a nice and small but strong ball head in here which you can tighten up from any angle with the large knob on the side and then there's also a small knob below it which if you loosen you can spin it on one axis. That's good for pans or any panoramic photos you want to do. On the ball head casing you have degrees. You have 1 to 360 which means there's also a little pointer and you can move your camera in segments if you were doing a panoramic shot and wanted to glue them together. You could take a shot at each degree and then get a 360 shot. This is also useful for in stop motions, which I've used it for, where you want a nice smooth pan, but obviously you're taking lots of photos. So you can use each of the degrees to do one photo and you get a nice smooth pan. On the front of the ball socket, there is a nice dip. This means that when the tripod is loosened, the tripod can fall down into that dip and you can do some vertical shooting, which is a great feature. Makes the tripod very versatile. Whether you want to do photos for Instagram or TikToks or whatever, you can go vertical or landscape. The tripod has a ring around the neck this allows you to extend the center column and it's a decent length center column meaning you can add a significant amount of height onto the tripod. This twist lock has never got stuck. Um, it's still very clean. I can't hear any dirt in it so it seems pretty sealed. It's, it doesn't have the issue that you can do it too tight that you can't unscrew it again. It's a very nice neat looking screw. So then we have the legs. Each of these legs is nice and metal and they have a little clip up here which allows you to clip them at different angles and then be secure. You can also then clip that all the way to flip them all the way up like that. One of the legs has a foam grip this is good because if you were to take the tripod to a very cold place, say Scotland or even the Antarctic, then this foam means you don't have to touch the cold metal. You can hold it by the foam, which will stay at a nice temperature, relatively. The legs are adjustable by clips. 
these clips are nice and easy to pull out, pull out and they're arranged so you can pull them all out at once, extend the leg to full and then go up one by one. This means it's very quick and easy to extend the legs. I'm struggling to get this in the camera. And it means if you're out in the field, I do lots of wildlife photography, so I've got to get all my photos very quickly. And it means that I can do that without having to worry about getting my tripod ready. These flicks are then easy to push down and they're very secure. These flicks have never failed on me. They've never released and the tripod slipped, so they're nice and strong. Now I've had this tripod for about eight months now, so I'm talking from a place of experience. The legs do not seem to gather much dirt inside the compartment where the flip is. Um, it's relatively smooth. Now I've taken this tripod out into fields and mud and the tripod legs have got dirty, really dirty. I mean, the, the bottom of here in the winter on like farmland have been totally submerged in mud. And yet, there's hardly any dirt inside this flick, which surprises me because it's literally been caked in mud. So the ceiling is pretty good and it shouldn't get too dirty, especially if you're not planning on taking it out into swamps. Talking about that, we'll look at the weathering on this tripod, and it is very good. As I say, I've taken this tripod out in the rain, in the mud, I've taken it all over the place, bashed it around, and it still looks pretty much new. There's a few bumps on the label at the front, but that's because that is just some paper. But other than that, it's very good. Even the foam does not have any knocks or bumps on it. So altogether, the weathering on this tripod is very good. The legs are fastened up here nice and strongly with a big bolt into the metal frame which goes into the three legs. Again, very strong, never had to worry about that with my big lenses. And finally, there's a hook on the bottom here, which means you can hang your bag from it, which I've done before, or you can hang a bag of rocks from it, anything which will increase the weight of the tripod, making it more sturdy. And not only that, this hook can then be screwed off. So, give it a bit of screwing. The whole spring contraption comes out. And this means, if you loosen this screw up here, the main one at the top to extend the middle column, you can take the middle column straight out. So now I have the middle column out. Now, I've never heard anyone say this before, so this will probably be the first place you've seen it, but this can be used as a selfie stick or a vlogging stick. You see, if you adjust the ball head to an angle, you can then hold this out in front of you with the camera on it and use it as a vlogging stick to use with a proper DSLR camera. And it's incredibly secure. So that's one, but the reason they did this was so that you can flip it upside down with the ball head facing downwards and slot it up, just got to find, it's all about finding the right angle, but you can slot it up but you can slot it up and through the top of the tripod you can then tighten this column at the front again and you have a kind of net it's like a weird upside down tripod, which means you can hang your camera from the bottom and get nice low angle shots. This is really useful for wildlife when you want to get to eyes level of them. But if you're photographing water or anything where you want a low angle shot, which can look really nice and empowering, this is a great way to do it. And the finish of this tripod is also very nice. It's nice and neat. It's black, which is one of the reasons I bought it. There's no fancy bright oranges or anything, which might disturb wildlife in my case, but it has the odd gold coated, not real gold, just the gold color on the little flicks here and around this twister at the top for the central, central column. It's got nice rubber feet, which are good at standing up, but yeah, it's all black except for obviously silver screws and the hook at the bottom. The disadvantages of this tripod 
are that it isn't carbon fibre, but you can't expect that for the £70 worth that it is. It is also not the heaviest or the stablest because it is a travelling tripod. It's made to be compact so it fits in your bag and you can take it with you. If this was to be more stable, it would have to be bigger, bulkier, heavier, and then it wouldn't be so ideal for travelling. However, as I say, the hook at the bottom means you can add weight to it, making it more stable. Now, I think it's time to do some tests about the stability of this tripod. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set the tripod up with a camera on top of it, set that camera recording, and then at different heights, first we'll start just totally down, everything is shut, and then we'll increase the height slowly, flick the leg, and then we'll see how long it takes for the vibrations in the film to stop vibrating. This gives us a good indicator of how stable the tripod is. We will also turn off any image stabilization in the camera and the lens does not have any stabilization as I'm using the Canon 18-55 to lens. Okay, now you are on the phone, sorry for the bad quality, but here we have the camera set up and then here we have the Canon 50mm prime lens. So what we're going to be doing is focusing this lens with manual focus on the lens here. And I've got it on chair because this is on its smallest setting, so it's quite short. And then we're going to flick the leg of the tripod and see how long it takes for the vibrations to stop. Now at this height, I don't expect to even see vibrations hardly, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so just hit record. And so we saw hardly any vibrations on the first test. Now we have the camera set up with one of the leg columns extended. We're gonna focus it on the 50 millimeter lens again and see the vibrations. And again, we didn't see hardly any vibrations in the second test. But now we've extended the third leg column, making the tripod quite tall. It's quite hard to find something at this height to use as a subject, so I've had to balance the lens on top of my binoculars, but it's now at a good height, so all the tests are the same. Now I'm gonna hit record and flick the leg. And the tripod's doing really well so far. Again, hardly any vibrations, but now we have raised the center column. Now, this is where you do expect to see some vibrations. So once again, I've got the lens now on the top of this fireplace to get it a good height. And we're going to flick the tripod to see how much vibration there is. And the tests for this tripod are complete and what we found out is that it's very stable. I was expecting a lot more vibration than we had, but it did very well. So it's also a very stable tripod. So now we're briefly going to talk about the case. This tripod comes with a bag. This bag can be held by the handle or you can put it over your shoulder using the strap. This bag is decently padded, however it feels like a plastic material padding it. Probably here, the crinkling of what seems to be some sort of plastic, but it is nice and padded and will keep the tripod safe. The zip is nice and secure. However, this shoulder strap is possibly not the best. One, when you attach it to the bag, it means the bag hangs upside down. Now this seems a bit random. The zip then goes underneath the bottom of the bag, meaning if the zip did come undone, the tripod would fall out. Now this has never happened in my experience, however, it just seems a little bit peculiar. And the piece that goes over the shoulder is made of a very slippery, plasticky material, which doesn't grip very well. So if you're carrying it on one shoulder, then it could slip off quite a lot. The bag has a highly reflective rim around it, which is nice for if you're walking on roads or somewhere busy. 
in the dark because it makes you nice and obvious. So I hope you enjoyed this review and found it interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching.